Regardless of what diet you feed your dog, whether it is raw or kibble, your dog at some point in his or her life will be faced with digestive issues. It's, an, it's a fact of life for all dogs and all humans for that matter. And because of that, today's video contains some of the most essential information that you are going to need as a dog owner regarding your dog's gut health and immune system health. Today, I am bringing you an exclusive interview with Dr. Rob Franklin, who is the co-founder of Full Bucket Health, a pet nutrition company that is dedicated to providing assistance to animals in need. Dr. Franklin is a board certified equine specialist who has worked, traveled, practiced all over the world. So this interview is going to be a real treat for you. In this video, you will get answers to your most common questions about feeding probiotics to dogs, as well as tons of very empowering information about animal nutrition that I think you're going to find absolutely fascinating. I know I did. If you are new to my channel, my name is Stephanie, aka Big Dog Mom, and on this channel, I provide information and resources to help you and your big dog live your best life together. And as always, if you have a big dog or you just want one, please consider subscribing to this channel before you go and hit that like button if you like this video. And one more thing, make sure you comment below if you like the format of this interview and if you like these types of interviews, I'll make sure that I do more of them. All right, let's get on with this terrific interview with Dr. Franklin at Full Bucket Health. So okay. thank you so much, Dr. Franklin, for joining me today. And I know that my audience is going to absolutely love this conversation that we're about to have about probiotics for dogs and something that I have talked at great length about over the last couple of years and written extensively about on BigDogMom.com. And so I'm excited to finally have the opportunity to sit down with you for a little bit and just kind of pick your brain about probiotics, and then to learn a little bit more about what Full Bucket Health has in terms of the probiotics that, that you offer and kind of the unique advantages that your products have for dogs um, specifically. So with that being said, I'd love for you to just give a, a quick synopsis of kind of your expertise and you know your background a little bit and how you kind of landed where you are today with uh, Full Bucket Health. Sure, sure. Well, I'm uh, I'm a veterinarian, and I've been a veterinarian for about 22 years, and uh, graduate from Texas A&M University. I went on and did internship and residency, and so I'm actually a, a veterinary internal medicine specialist. And um, I currently live kind of west of Austin and north of San Antonio in the beautiful Texas Hill Country in a small town called Fredericksburg. It's our own little version of of Napa, not. Not uh, not that we're there yet, but we're trying. Um, and so it's really a slice of heaven for, for us Texans. But um, we have a, a small animal and an equine clinic uh, where we do horses, dogs, and cats. Um, and, you know, dogs have always been something that I've grown up with. Uh, they've always been part of my life. And, and while I've done a, a lot of horse work, I, you know, the dog stitch has been heavily woven into my life, both professionally and uh, personally. And so um, I love I love what you uh, do and, and, you know, the people that uh, are in your tribe are, are certainly close to me and, and, and the things that I care about. Um, the impetus for myself and um, one of my veterinary classmates, uh, a surgeon, uh, Dr. Keith Latz, and the impetus for us to start Full Bucket was really because we were trying to um, integrate things like probiotics into our patients. And uh, this was, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and there really weren't any good commercial products available. In fact, mm -hmm. you know, probiotics in, in general were discounted as something that didn't work or weren't necessary. Uh, and, and there just wasn't that much research out there. And so um, in the 20th, uh, at the end of the 20th century, into the 21st century, there there began to become some really good studies. And a lot of these were human studies, but also veterinary studies as well. And where we found that uh, probiotics can be uh, very, very beneficial, not only to uh, mitigate disease processes, but also just to optimize health. And so it's, um, you know, there there's a preventative mechanism uh, with probiotics as well as a therapeutic mechanism. And we began to understand um, the different strains of probiotics and, and which ones conveyed certain health benefits and which ones didn't and what were the qualities that we were looking for to be able to uh, 
to give the right thing to our patients. And so Dr. Latson and I, uh, you know, as, as practicing veterinarians, we had to go into this discovery mode of, of how do you make a, a veterinary supplement and, you know, how do you source the right ingredients and put them in the right concentration and put them in a form that would reach the, 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 the target um, part of the in, in intestinal tract without being uh, disabled by storage or by heat or by moisture or by the gastric juices or the other digestive enzymes. And, and so that was a, a real struggle, but it, it was a, a struggle and with struggle comes understanding. And, um, you know, since about 2006, uh, we've, we've, we've come to understand quite a bit about probiotics. And I think we do a really nice job at, uh, at providing something that does help our patients and, and also many pets out there in the, in the country. So I'm curious, just this isn't a question that I prepared, but as you guys were studying that, were there specific health conditions that you were trying to, trying to target things that were like unaddressed or things where you felt like a probiotic really is the solution to this, but there's really not a solution in the probiotic space. So that's kind of where you came in to sort of search for something. But were there specific health conditions that were causing you to kind of go down this this road? Yeah, and the, the most notable is diarrhea. Um, and obviously, that's the first thing that comes to mind when people uh, take probiotics or when they, um, sure. they give them to their animals is that uh, they're tr typically trying to um, stop or prevent diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And... That was the thing. Diarrhea is very frustrating to, to treat in all species, uh, including people. Um, you know, it, it, it's devastating to veterinary species because those animals, um, you know, they just begin to feel bad and they quit taking care of themselves. And oftentimes right. the, the thing that the results in their demise is, is complications to dehydration and electrolyte disturbances. And that's, you know, something where we have to come in with IV fluids and balance all those things, provide that supportive care where, you know, when you and I, if we get a digestive upset, we typically can mitigate a lot of those symptoms up to a certain level. And then we've got to go to the, to the hospital. But for, for our veterinary species, um, you know, it, 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 quite honestly, it'll, it'll kill them. And, um, and so, and it's difficult to treat, uh, not only is supportive care there, but a lot of times supportive care is there just to allow the body to heal itself, to give it time to heal itself. But, um, you know, specific causes, diarrhea can be very difficult to treat. And sometimes our chronic diarrheas are very difficult to diagnose mm -hmm. and they're difficult to treat. So, um, those, 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 cases are what really spurred us on. But, you know, again, in those struggles comes, becomes discovery and knowledge. And that's where you just begin to, to understand the, the immense uh, biological benefits that probiotics convey, you know, in so many other parts of the, the body beyond just the digestive tract. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is so interesting too, just because in a former life, I actually was involved in the human vaccine world. And one of the vaccines that um, I was involved with was for rotavirus. So oh, which yeah. kills yeah. millions of babies every year, um, mm -hmm. still to this day, but rotavirus vaccine has been, I mean, just one of those very important uh, innovations that has really helped a lot of, a lot of babies. But nonetheless, just interesting that, that that was the thing that kind of sparked you down led you down this path. And I know that I can speak for many dog owners where when our dogs have diarrhea, it is one of those things where you're sort of without a lot of advice, you know, it's fast right. your dog, maybe for 24 hours, feed a bland diet, um, stay away from the things that could be triggers. And then those, the probiotics, and we can t kind of talk more in a, in a few minutes about how you might incorporate probiotics into a, a diet, whether the dog has diarrhea or not, and kind of how you would advise uh, people to, to be giving and feeding these. But one of the questions that I got, and I get pretty often, is about, so why would I, why do I need to feed a probiotic? So number one, you know, the scenario where somebody's feeding a commercial kibble diet, and you know, the bag of dog food says there's probiotics contained in the food. So why do I have to then add something? And then the second, you know, on the other side, it's somebody like myself that feeds a raw diet and feels like, you know, I'm, they're getting fresh meat and bone and 
fresh veggies, I feed them yogurt, is that not good enough? And so I guess, how would you kind of respond to maybe both, both scenarios, depending upon, you know, what that diet is that that dog is eating? Right. And I think where I typically go with these type of questions is, um, is just going back to what is natural for a dog. Um, and, and it's just kind of the same for, for us as people, you know, I take, um, I take a probiotic, I take 5 billion, uh, colony forming units of Saccharomyces boulardii every morning. Um, and, and I don't have any digestive problems. Um, and, and so I don't take it as a, as a, as a remedy. I take it because my natural diet, uh, does not, does not occur. You know, we are very far removed from a natural diet of a hunter gatherer type of, of diet. And, you know, even the, the fact of washing our food, even though we know that's extremely important these days, I mean, we didn't, that's not the way we evolved. We evolved by consuming microbes on our food mm -hmm. as part of our food. All the, the skins of all of our, um, the, the fruits and vegetables contain microbes on them. Of course, we have to remove those potentially pathogenic ones, the disease causing ones in order to, to sell food commercially or prepare it in a restaurant or something like that. But you're, you're kind of sterilizing your your, um, you know, what you eat and that's not natural. So, um, and I'm not advocating for people not to wash their veggies because they are being grown with, you know, potentially, you know, salmonella in the fertilizer and, you know, you have to be careful. Just chemicals but I, I, even. So yeah. The, even the sure. chemicals. Yeah. Um, but, but even on an organic farm, I mean, you're de you, you, you could potentially be, you know, taking in something that could hurt you. But as a hunter and gatherer, that wasn't the situation. So let's mm -hmm. talk about a dog or a cat. Um, you know, they they naturally would consume prey, right? And that prey was typically a small mammal. Um, it could be, you know, something that was you know, killed by another predator and, and left or something that died. But typically, small small mammals are are what our dogs. Um, you know, hunt and, and fed off of, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the case of a wolf, they're going to, they're going to hunt in a pack and they're going to take down a larger animal. But with all those meals, those meals are, um, very diversely taken in. So they're going to take in, uh, brain tissue that's going to have high omega fatty acids. They're going to take in, um, bone and cartilage and, and tendon and uh, sinew. And that's going to have high levels of minerals and building blocks such as collagen that's going to help them repair their system. They're going to take in the muscle that's going to provide the protein to replace their own muscle. Um, but they're also going to be getting into those entrails. And in those entrails, they are going to be consuming things like the pancreas and the bile duct or the, the bile fluid in the gallbladder, the liver, um, the, the intestine, um, all that contains enzymes and probiotics. They're naturally replenishing those with every meal. And so it, it's just a very amazing natural way for them to be able to replenish the things that they needed. And if you think about consuming a small mammal, they're getting basically a multivitamin by just taking in that that complete animal because that that animal has all those things in it has enzymes has minerals has protein has uh, fat has um, you know everything the body needs is packaged up in there and so um, whenever we try to emulate that in a commercial diet we're just we can't be successful um, even people like yourself that are very well educated about creating a natural diet and trying to uh, put all the building blocks together in a, in a, in a raw diet. I mean, you, you, you still are having to piecemeal it because you're not right. going out and collecting a squirrel out of your backyard in Michigan. Right. I mean, no. it's, <laughs> you're still having to take pieces and try to put together and try to put a, a wholesome diet. Wholesome means the whole thing, right? The, everything that you need. And, and so what we're not getting is we're not getting probiotics um, in that amongst you know, potentially other things, depending on what the diet. And when we talk about commercially prepared foods, again, the, the thing that, um, that all of our feed manufacturers and, and pet food manufacturers have to be very, very careful with are some of the food borne illnesses that can be uh, produced whenever they're making these, these kibble diets. And so the FDA requires them to heat those foods up to mm -hmm. a certain temperature where it wipes out all the microbes right? They're talking about things like salmonella and E. coli. Those are the sure. things that when we see these 
these stories on the news where these, you know, they've had these massive dog food recalls. Right. It's because there are microbes in there, right? And so anytime you're buying a kibble that says it has a probiotic, now please understand, it's important to understand that I can put probiotics in the kibble and because I put them in the kibble, I can put them on the label, but that doesn't mean that they had to live through the kibble process. Okay. So if, now when they make a kibble there, it's a big boiling vat full of all these different things, right? That's why they're brown and they're really weird looking. Dry right? And, yep. It, it, it's this brown vat full of food. So whatever I put in there, I can put probiotics, I can put omega fatty acids, I can put in it. It doesn't matter as long as I put it in there, I can put it on the label. Right. But then that has to be heated up to over 220 degrees for a certain period of time. And then you dry it out and you put it through that processing uh, where you get the kibble. You've killed all the microorganisms, right. the good and the bad. So uh, people don't understand that. And unfortunately, the dog food manufacturers, it, it's called label dressing and, it, and it's... Oh. You know, it, it, it's not being genuine on what's actually there. So, you know, just the opposite of that is when we make our products, we test them afterwards for to make sure they have the colony forming units of the probiotic that we say that's in there. We would love to make a dog food, a dog treat that um, that you could feed a dog. But when you do that, you again have to go through that heating process. And we've tried it and you can't do it. And so that's why we provide our probiotic in the form that we provide it in is because you can't put them in a dog in a dog treat and you can't put them in a kibble and it make it actually work. Well, and I, I would assume it's primarily because of the restrictions in terms of how things have to be manufactured and processed just before packaging, that it's more their, the regulations to make sure that everything has been killed, which of course mm -hmm. is killing your probiotics. Right. Um, and any good fatty acids that were then added back to the food, which they always, they put that on the fish oils and yeah, it is, right. it is marketing. And yeah, so I'm glad you address that. Cause I think that that's a really important point that a lot of times people don't, they don't quite realize what's inside the bag. I think the other thing that you mentioned too, when you were kind of talking about sort of a whole prey diet, um, mm -hmm. is that, you know, when we are trying to put together a raw diet for dogs, and I feed whole, you know, I mean, whole pieces of raw, maybe bones. So in other words, I don't grind anything. My dogs just right. eat everything, you know, pretty large pieces of whatever it is that I'm feeding. So as natural as it can be um, in, in their bowl. But the thing that I was thinking about is just that, you know, I I don't know that any of us know what the exact perfect balance is for a dog. So I think that it's when you have this, well, nobody really knows what that perfect balance is. So me trying to put together a diet, I'm always going to fall a little short. So in one right. area or another, maybe one day they get too much bone, another day they don't get enough, another day they get not the right mix of organs. So it's sort of we say in the raw feeding world kind of balance over time. But right. I think that the, where the probiotics come into play, and maybe I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, is just, so when you think about this concept of balance, you know, commercial kibble uh, manufacturers like to say, you know, balanced diet, complete and balanced, or whatever it is that they put on the bag. But when you think about that, they can't all be balanced, because they're all a little different. So I guess the point of what I'm trying to say is then how would you, knowing that that is the case, I think that's where probiotics come into play. That, you know, when you think about 70 to 80% of a dog's immune system starts in their gut, if you are solving that piece, if you fall short in the balance realm in terms of the nutrition, um, you know, maybe that's, that's one way that dog owners can kind of fill that gap, if you will. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Curious as to your thoughts. That was kind of rambling, but <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're you're right. And you know, my hats always go off to my clients and and people that I run into that um, that do a raw diet because it's hard work and and it it's worthwhile um, as long as you don't take any shortcuts. You know, it, it, it can be difficult, and and you know, we we've seen pets 
come in where people are just feeding, you know, bone and meat and yeah. those pets, you know, can get some deficiencies. Right. Sure. But I think, you know, the, the thing, um, like our kibbles and our raw diets, they can all be different and yet they can be complete. It's just the same way that someone who lives in Japan and eats a Japanese diet, someone who lives in Bolivia and eats a Bolivian diet, uh, they're going to be vastly different in the foodstuffs that they're intaking. Um, but, but they can be complete because completeness uh, revolves around um, how much mineral, how much vitamin, how much um, micronutrients and your protein and your Mm -hmm. carbohydrate, your fat intakes, you know, those, those things make, you know, the quote unquote balanced Mm -hmm. diet and they can be, that can be sourced from many, many different things. And some of those sources are, have, you know, additional benefits and some of them, you know, are, are cheaper sources of protein or carbohydrate or, or, you know, of fat. And they're, they're, they're less good for the body and not as well or easily utilized. So um, I think you can do that. But um, to your point, probiotics and enzymes are are one of those things that uh, need to be taken with time. Now, your body has the ability to to store a lot of things. It can store fat. It can store um, even carbohydrates in the form of glycogen in the muscle. It can store um, it can store protein uh, in your muscle. It can store, um, you know, your minerals and your bone, and it can leach those, all those things back out whenever there's times of need. So you're exactly right. I mean, even if you you feed a diet that's high here and low here, over time, if you can average that out, that's fine. But there's certain things that sort of need to be kept in balance. You don't need to deplete. You don't need to run highs and lows. And and one of those is your your gut and your ability to digest your food. So. Um, so you talked about the immune system. The immune system is a huge part of what keeps us in a kind of a uh, homeostasis or a mm-hmm. balanced life. I mean, if your immune system is functioning properly, then you're going to be able to fight off invaders. And you're also on the flip side of that, you're going to stop some of that autoimmune where our body is attacking itself, which is a huge problem in veterinary species. And it's mostly due to our commercial diets. And so taking care of that gut is going to be uh, very important in regulating the immune system, but also just being able to digest every meal. So if we said that over time we're providing the balanced nutrition, well, what if I said, well, you're putting it in, but are they actually able to get out what you're putting in? Right. And that's where you have to have probiotics and you have to have enzymes because you're typically not putting those into a normal diet, whether it's kibble or a raw diet, even a balanced one, you're not getting those um, those parts. And that's why the feed manufacturers are starting to put probiotics and enzymes in their kibble. But again, the heat deactivates the probiotics and the heat kills the enzymes too. It, it disables the enzymes. They're very heat sensitive. So yeah. um, enzymes, you know, are things, those of us that, that took chemistry and biochemistry, we remember that, that enzymes are the catalyst. They make something happen that almost needed a, a, a key for the lock to be opened, right? right. And, and that's where you have to have those enzymes. Our bodies make, or they're great at making enzymes, but they're not very good at it whenever we put a really rich meal in front of them all at once. They get overwhelmed or in, in times of illness, um, things like the pancreas or the liver may not be functioning properly and you may not get the secretion of those enzymes. Mm-hmm. And so you know, providing those enzymes and taking them in in that whole prey diet where they're consuming that mouse, that squirrel, um, that deer carcass where they're, they're, they're grabbing a hold and eating some of that pancreas and eating some of those bile salts and eating some of that liver and, and grabbing some of that intestine. They are doing that. They're, they're helping themselves break down their meal just by consuming that, that, those, those spare bits and parts that we typically go, oh, that's not healthy. It is it, it, it all fits in the magic of digestion in, yeah. and when you're consuming those meals. Yeah, I, I think that makes that makes perfect sense. You know, one of the things that people will say, so if, you, if you've sort of sold them on the concept of a dog needs to get probiotics in their diet, people naturally go to, well, there's lactobacillus in yogurt. Why is that not good enough? If I just do a scoop of yogurt in the bowl, that should be all they really need. So um, so what would you what would you say to that? Right. Well, I you know anybody that can at least make that jump from I don't need a probiotic to 
I, at least I'm they know. Do some yeah. yogurt. I, I'm like, great. Uh, at least the door's open, and yeah. I think we can get somewhere. You yeah. know, the people that yeah. just you know block it all out. I'm just. Uh, I'm, uh, oftentimes, I'll tell them to start start taking it themselves, and once they're convinced of the health benefits from themselves, yeah. they're not getting sick. Uh, they have regular BMs. They don't have any of the problems that you know with their gastrointestinal tract. Uh, their their immune system is rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. um, the skin doesn't itch anymore. You, you know, then I'm like, okay, now you're going to believe me for your pet, and and so um, it 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 really is a something you have to see to believe. But whenever they do believe in enough to go and start putting some yogurt on their their dog's diet, then now it's time that we we take that up a notch. So what you first have to understand is that. There are trillions of microbes in a dog's gastrointestinal tract, and the diversity is very, very important. So when we study the, the uh, bacteria, the yeast, and the protozoa in an animal's uh, any system, it's called the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And that's really a big buzzword in science right yeah. now. Uh, you read about that a lot. And, and for the past 10 years, we've really begun to think about this as a system, the same way that your musculoskeletal system is a system or your integumentary system, your skin is a system. Mm -hmm. The microbiome is a system. And it's cool because it's there's actually more of them than us. And when you start thinking about it, you have more bacteria than you have of your own cells right. in, in your body. So it, it is kind of it's kind of creepy to think about, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. And when we when we study that, we study about richness and diversity. OK, so how many different ones are there? And then of those different ones, you know, how many of those are there? And so the the thing that becomes very self-evident is that there is there is no perfect probiotic out there that replaces what we're missing. Okay. Yeah. Like you, you can't take it like vitamin D your vitamin D's level is low. So I'm going to take some D or my B's low. So I'm going to take some B it, there in each of us has a different microbiome. Those different breeds may have a different microbiome. The ones that live in Florida are going to have a different microbiome than the ones in Washington. Arizona versus Michigan. I mean, it, it's all different. It's also based on your genetics and the pet's genetics on how rich and diverse their microbiome is, but they're all different. And so again, there's not a one size fits all. Oh, if you just take lactobacillus, you're going to be fine. Or you look at the back of some probiotics and they got seven different strains or right. maybe 27 different strains. Again, 27 different strains, even though that sounds like a lot to us, it is literally uh, not even a, a a drop in the ocean compared to, you know, the natural richness and diversity. In fact, for, you know, the most successful human probiotics right now are these fecal transplants where they're oh. actually taking healthy feces and they're administering them either in capsule or via because enema there's to so many microbes in there. Yes. Okay. Right. Wow. Okay. So that's, that is the gold standard in people. And I'm talking about people that have terrible diseases like Clostridium difficile colitis, or they've been affected with HIV and they've wiped out um, through, the, through all these antibiotics. Now this goes back before we had all the antivirals, but they used to have to take, you know, a lot of AIDS patients would take a lot of antibiotics trying to kill off infections that were occurring, but they're also because wiping they're, out right. natural flora, right? Okay. So these are the only things that can truly replace. So anything short of that, we're really not uh, able to do. And we don't have that available in veterinary. Uh, in, it's not commercially available. You know, for livestock, we will sometimes do a transphonation, um, but that's not common in, in pets. And quite honestly, you have to be very careful because you can transmit things like parasites and, and disease causing bacteria if you just go about it haphazardly and you start administering a healthy, a healthy dog's poo to another dog is sick. You that it's so anyways i just want to right. bookend that as that's the ultimate okay? okay now you have yogurt okay over here which is it, it's so one-dimensional the bacteria actually haven't been proven to to provide a health benefit to the 
to the dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one thing you're, you're feeding something live. That's good. And there may be just a sort of a dilutional effect that may have some slight benefit, but as far as having been a true probiotic, that means that you convey a health benefit to the host, that bacteria or yeast provides a true one. So what our aim is actually, is actually to let the body repair itself. It's like having a broken arm and putting a cast on it. The body can repair itself if you can stabilize the arm long enough for the body to mend itself, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the body can actually keep its microbiome in check if you can fight off the invaders, the bad actors, the, the pathogens that can get into the digestive tract and can overwhelm and can minimize that richness and diversity. If you, mm -hmm. if you can do that, if you can sort of keep things stable, then you can, that natural balance will either come back. So if you've had a situation where you've given antibiotics or something, you've wiped a lot of it out. If you can just stabilize it, the natural ones will come back or in a preventative measure, if you can take those in on a daily basis, then you don't allow that, that the normal yes. ratio to get disrupted. Okay. And so that's why we use a very specific type of probiotic. It's called Saccharomyces boulardii. It's a yeast. Okay. And that, that's important for a couple of reasons. And one of them is because it is not affected by antibiotics. Okay. A lot of times we use antibiotics and probiotics at the same time. The rationale is beautiful, but the practicality is that if you give a probiotic and you give an antibiotic, you've just killed the probiotic with the antibiotic. Right. Okay. And with yeast, that's not true unless you're actually using an antifungal drug, which we very, very rarely use in veterinary species. As long as you're not using that, you're not going to kill this. So it can be administered with with antibiotics. So that makes it very, very useful. And it's also why while it is naturally occurring, it, it's um, first discovered off the skins of grapes in Indonesia. Um, and, and so that probiotic is natural. But it's not necessarily something that we find naturally in people or dogs or, or horses or, or other species. But we find that it is one of those things that will act like a NATO force. So if you think of a, a country that has a police force, an international police force that's just there, that just sort of is there to hold the peace. It's not a natural resident. It's not trying to emulate being a natural resident. It's not trying to repopulate and do something that's missing. It's just there to protect the natural residents. That's the way the Saccharomyces boulardii works. And I'm not just coming up with this out of my own mind. This is what science tells us. There's more scientific articles about this particular species a probiotic than there are any other species of probiotics. It's very, very well studied. Again, most of that studies, most of those studies are done in people, but there are um, a subset of veterinary studies as well that show the health benefits of Saccharomyces boulardii. So that is our approach. And it's a different approach from, again, those the logic of I need to replace something that's missing. Um, you know, we were talking about trying to balance your dog foods. Diet. If you will just protect your dog's gut and immune system, mm -hmm. the dog's gut and immune system is very resilient and it will keep itself in balance. As long as you're not allowing insults to come in and take over where those insults could be chemicals coming in from their environment, from, sure. you know, walking around the dog park or any of those things to in their diet, um, in your, in your house, you know, there's a lot of chemicals that can disrupt their natural microbiome. And this is a this is an attempt for us to stabilize that. And we talked about the immune system too. Well, there's pre and probiotics. The prebiotics are kind of the, the non-alive part. They're typically there to, to provide food to the, the normal uh, residents of the intestinal tract. And so prebiotics are very important, but prebiotics equally or is important on the immune system because they are they trigger the immune system. So as they go down uh, the course of the, the gastrointestinal tract, they're signaling along the way, they're priming it, saying, you know, you're overacting, you're underreacting. The, you know, they're help regulate that immune response. So you need to do prebiotics and you need to pro do probiotics. Right. That may open up another can of worms. I'm not sure what your <laughs> listenership is. If they make heads or tails of that, I get that question a lot. What's a prebiotic? What's a probiotic? But it's important that you do both. Yeah. And I think, well, those that have read my blog for a while know about it. But, um, but I do think that that's something that a lot of people don't consider. So again, kind of going back to the whole scoop of yogurt's good enough. 
um, especially for raw feeders that don't feed veggies and fruits, because that's really going to be kind of where that the uh, the great, prebiotic great it's the food for the mm-hmm. yeast or the bacteria or what have you. Exactly. Um, so I'm curious because, well, so not to go down a whole can of worms, but Junior was on an antifungal when he had valley fever. So, mm-hmm. and that whole time I was giving him a probiotic. So I'm assuming I was probably not doing, well, I wasn't feeding daily dogs. So, um, if you were doing, if you were doing a non yeast based or uh, now yeast and fungus okay. about the same thing, right? So, um, if you were doing uh, a bacteria in that case, if you were doing a bacterial, uh, type of probiotic, that would mm-hmm. probably be more appropriate, but okay. that, yes, but the logic is true. Valley fever, you know, some of those desert diseases, those are the rare times that we tend to see fungus infect our, our pets. Right. Um, but it is possible and you've lived through it and your pets live through it. So, yeah. um, th- they are very difficult to treat, but yes, they in, are. In those cases, and expensive, might... <laughs> as it turns <laughs> out for a dog that's 240 pounds. So <laughs> Oof, I cannot imagine. Yes. We live yes. to tell about it. He's like the million dollar dog, but, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so I think, so I think you kind of addressed, and so is there any other kind of a dog that wouldn't be able to, to take a yeast-based probiotic? Is there any other health reasons that you wouldn't give a yeast-based probiotic? And I guess maybe this, well, I'll I'll leave it there. So I'm curious if there's any other situations where you wouldn't feed this. Yeah. So the typical thing that people, you know, get worried about with the yeast is they start thinking about yeast infections, whether those are vaginal yeast infections or they're gastrointestinal yeast infections. But people think about if I feed yeast, I'm going to get a yeast infection. Right. What's interesting is that that does not occur with Saccharomyces boulardii. How do I know that? The studies show that, for example, in the HIV AIDS patients, they were feeding massive doses of Saccharomyces boulardii again, because these these patients would get terrible, terrible diarrhea, Clostridium difficile diarrhea typically from being on all these antibiotics. And Clostridium difficile is a major uh, cause of diarrhea, both in people and in pets and in uh, cattle and then horses. Um, it is It typically is associated with antibiotic use. Um, in these studies, they were feeding massive doses of, of Saccharomyces boulardii to these uh, AIDS patients, and they did not ever get any uh, overgrowth of Saccharomyces boulardii. It doesn't overgrow like Candida does. Okay, Candida is the main one that we worry about in our gut and our vaginal uh, infections. Right. Uh, it does not do that. And actually, to the to the contrary, the studies show that that providing the prebiotic probiotic combination um, with Saccharomyces boulardii actually stimulates the immune system, and you see a lower rate of vaginal yeast infections in women that take um, those probiotics as well. So um, hmm. you don't have to worry about yeast overgrowth. You're going to get um, a great stimulus stimulation to your immune system, which is going to prevent those bad yeast from overgrowing, in fact. So it, it actually works as a safety. Um, so there's not really any, any reason that, um, that you should be worried about overdosing or the patient not being appropriate for, for that type of uh, condition or okay. supplement. If we could kind of just get your two cents on feeding a bacterial-based probiotic as well as a yeast-based probiotic, and if there's any differences in terms of how you would feed a probiotic, maybe with and without an antibiotic, that was a handful, but just kind of how you would direct somebody to feed either a bacteria-based normal probiotic that you might buy for your dog or the daily dog probiotic. Yep. And, and so I'll just describe a bit about what the daily dog is or what's in it. And just yeah. so that we're talking about, uh, yeah. we're clear what we're talking about. So the daily dog that you're holding up there, uh, is a combination of prebiotics, probiotics. Um, you see that, uh, amino acid L glutamine that's in there. Yeah. And you also see the word to the left of that enzymes. Yeah. Okay. So those are the key ingredients in daily dog. And we believe that those are, um, and you also see the, the colony forming counts there, the 5 billion. Yep. So the, those are the things that um, that we believe are, are most uh, important. In, in fact, I, I went to, I've got one of those concierge physicians. I, I value my own health as a healthcare professional. I, I spend money on myself because I, I think 
you know, preventative health care is important. And it was interesting uh, in my appointment that I had with him earlier this year. You know, he was he does extensive blood testing and examinations and everything. And and uh, and so he was talking to me about gut health. And I said, Doc, what are the most important things? Uh, I, I'm a vegetarian, but, uh, you know, I said other than my diet, um, we eat vegetarian, occasional sources of, uh, of fish, and we try to eat organically. Um, what, what else do I need to be doing? He said, well, he, he said, you need to be doing, uh, in addition to that, there's only four things you need to do. He's like, mm. you need to take a supplement. This got L-glutamine. What is L-glutamine? L-glutamine is an amino acid, and it's the main fuel source for all the cells that line your intestinal tract. So you're basically making sure that they those cells have their nutrition provided to them in an easy form. Okay. Then you need to provide, you need to take enzymes because you need to completely digest your food. If you don't completely digest your food, you're going to send a lot of undigested food into your hindgut. It's going to throw off your microbiome in your hindgut. You're going to have um, ulcerative colitis. You're going to develop inflammation in there because a lot of the the sort of putrefaction bacteria start to take over because you haven't digested your food enough. So take enzymes. And he said you need a prebiotic because a prebiotic is going to provide a fertilizer to your healthy microbes that are in your intestinal tract, and you need a well-researched probiotic. And I said, okay, good. I, 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 I think we're on the same page here. Um, but but really, that's, that's where we... Um, and that just supported uh, the I, use of daily dog, but that's that was very um, it's very good for me to hear that coming from a, a medical professional um, that deals with people in in terms of our needs are similar, and so um, the way that we take those is on a daily basis. Okay, that's the first thing to answer your question. Okay, and then we can put those on top of our food. Now, taking those, especially with the enzymes, taking those with our meal is going to help digest. Um, our meal completely. So that's important. Um, for dogs that aren't uh, able to, to take food, or maybe they're particularly um, picky eaters or something, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's our veterinary patients that uh, they've gotten into something or they've got a, a, a GI upset and we may Absolutely. want them to fast or we may want a very specific diet and interval. And, and so I don't want to top dress anything um, in those cases. So that's where we'll use a paste and we make the, the daily dog in a paste form as well. But typically okay. that's going to come from your veterinarian because there's no need to do it on a daily basis. Um, in but that it's, form. In that form, right. It. Um, but it, it, it it's there in those situations where you're fasting or, or controlling the intake of that dog, um, a dog's meal. And so if you're going to be feeding something like uh, yogurt or um, a bacterial uh, formulation of, of probiotics, again, um, those are going to need to go on on the on the food typically. Um, and, you know, I would just encourage people to to think of those probiotics as is more of a complete type of uh, a package. So just because you're doing a probiotic doesn't make it good. What are the strains? What, what's the science behind them? Are there prebiotics in there? Are there enzymes in there? Is there L-glutamine in there? And a lot of those things that we find that maybe are commercially available or on the grocery store shelf or uh, find on Chewy.com or something like that, they're just- they're, Not viable. People don't know, right? And so they right. just see probiotic and they buy it and they think, check the box and go on down the road. So I would just say, uh, try to inform yourself and be, you know, anything you're putting on your dog's food, be an informed uh, parent, pet parent, and and know what the health benefits and, and know what you're putting in there. Chances are most of the time you're wasting your money on it. But, yeah. you know, there there are some good products out there, but I'm, I can safely say that ours is very well researched and it's going to give your dog something that they do need on a daily basis, regardless of what their diet is, regardless of what their health situation is. Yeah. Okay. And when a, when a pet is on, when a dog is on an antibiotic, there's yes. literally nothing you need to do because you're feeding yast Right, Correct. the antibiotics you can feed that at the same time. On the yeast. Yeah, right. If yeast. you're feeding, uh, even you know, if, if you want to alternate, that's fine, but it's not necessary. Okay. Um, because because there's no action for an antibiotic that's geared towards bacteria. Maybe you've got a skin infection or something like that. There, there's no activity against this this type of probiotic. Okay. Um, if you're if you're feeding yogurt or you're feeding a bacterial source, then definitely uh, 
go as far in between the intervals as possible between the two because they're going to mix in the intestinal tract and one's going to kill the other. Right. Yeah. I always, so on the blog, I have recommended two hours in between the two. So if you can separate the doses, but my guess is the speed with which the dog's system is actually digesting that food would probably it, for one dog it might be two hours for another dog it may be five hours so maybe there is yeah. some variability there it's like that imperfect science that we don't have all the answers for but and, and with our busy life who really has time to be doing no that? you don't you're, you're lucky if you get your dog fed in the morning some days so right. yeah <laughs> and for our patients you know we just want them to get the medications in them you know and it's you know compliance is a huge problem you know yeah. the dog doesn't want to take it people forget they give it once a day instead of twice a day you know it's it, it's a huge problem so yeah. we try to make that very easy from the supplement standpoint when you feed them you put it on there and that's it i am curious since you mentioned uh-huh. the l-glutamine um is that naturally occurring though? Like if you were to eat meat, since your doctor recommended you take that as a supplement, I'm assuming it's because you're not getting it through your diet or do we just need more of it than people are normally consuming? Yeah, it's, it's called a conditionally essential amino acid. Okay. Mm-hmm. So conditionally essential means that your body under normal circumstances is able to make it. So, you Got know, it. even okay. as a vegetarian, um, my body can make L-glutamine. But in times of stress or in times of disease, that is when your body isn't able to make enough of of a conditionally essential uh, amino acid. And so, again, if if you're if you're stressed, if you're diseased, uh, your body can't make it. uh, The gut's the last thing you want to be, you know, dying for a drink, if you will. Uh, They need that on a daily basis. And so that's why we include it's very safe amino acid. It's naturally occurring. Um, but it, it can be conditionally essential. There are some essentially um, essential, you, you're familiar with this, uh, essential amino acids, and those are ones that our body can't make under any circumstances, and we have to right. take those in. Those don't have to come from uh, from meat. Those can come from plants, but that our bodies cannot fabricate those. If you have those essential uh, amino acids, you can make everything else. Got it. Okay. Unless and the you're same in a condition. True, the same is true in terms of the l glutamine with our dogs. Yes. That it's mostly right. important in times of stress and that sort of thing that they and need disease. to make sure that they have yeah. that on board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That makes good, sense. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yep. I just wanted to, to address that because I haven't, I've never had a doctor say that to me, but it is interesting just as we kind of think about how to improve our own health, especially now, I just feel like more than ever have I gotten into the science of vitamins and minerals and, you know, things that maybe I didn't take two years ago, I'm taking now that it's just, it's just interesting to learn. Well, I should have known that. I don't know why I didn't know that. I actually graduated in microbiology, but we didn't study humans as like the immune system and all of that. I think it was just, I was in the lab and honestly, I was studying clostridium of all things. So funny. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. uh, It's an interesting, uh, uh, genus uh, of, of microbes. That's for sure. I mean, there's a lot of naturally occurring clostridium in us, uh, but, but there, there there's some handful of bad boys in there. Some really bad ones. Botulism, uh, you know, to name a few, um, perfringence. The uh, the thing that I, the point that I was going to make is that I, I really think there's been a, a tide turning in the past decade of um, how we're all approaching medicine, um, mm-hmm. and, and medicine has been historically a very reactionary thing. You mm-hmm. go to the doctor when you're sick. You, yeah. uh, you you eat something healthy whenever you're feeling bad. Um, you take your dog to the vet whenever it's not doing right. Um, right. You, you know, it's kind of this fire for, fire fighter mode that we've always been in, both on the human and the veterinary side. And mm-hmm. I think in the past 10 years, you're really seeing um, people and veterinarians and pet owners start to think about wellness. Yeah. Let's not Prevention. get a fire going. Yeah. Let's do some things that put ourselves in a position where we, yeah, we're going to go to the vet. We're going to go to our doctor. We're going to do it when we're healthy. Right. to make sure that we're healthy, to run blood tests and make sure that everything's tick along to, Check you know, run levels, a fecal yep, on your dog, yep. you know, I mean, to do all those things to make sure you're optimized. And that to me has really been the buzzword for my own health is just 
optimize. Yep. I'm not just trying to get by. I want to I want to live a long time and I want to be mobile and I want to, you know, have cognition yep. and you know, I want those things. So how do I get there at 47? I need to be taking care of this thing right. like it's a temple, you know, yep. and and you do that by optimizing. I think a lot of veterinarians are going there. I think a lot of um, human healthcare providers are going there. I think just it, it's being demanded by the general public is they realize that we don't want to be sick anymore. We no. want to be healthy. So how do we do that? And and that's, you know, people like yourself that, that are educating people on how to care for their pets. What you're doing is you're trying to optimize those pets' wellness and, and so they don't get sick. And that yep. strengthens the human-animal bond that allows those pets to live longer. I mean, these giant breed dogs, you know, if they're not well cared for and optimized, they don't live that long. And no. so we need to optimize their health and optimize our health so we can care for them and they can care for us, you know? So right. it's a, it's a different approach to medicine and I'm, and I'm glad it's one that's occurring in my, in my professional career. Yeah. I, I love that you said that. Cause I, I just couldn't agree more. And I think that the, the veterinarians and, and the medical doctors, the physicians, human physicians that are out there that recognize that and see that and prioritize it for themselves, I think are really they're the ones that are seeing the influx of people. I think it's where we've, and especially, I mean, I've been to numerous veterinarians and, and yeah, I do flock to those that have a more natural approach that I think see a dog as a holistic animal. It's not just one, one thing I'm here to treat whatever it is that they've got going on, but really it's a recognition that that's probably affecting this other thing. And it's maybe even stemming from this other root cause that you're not even right. thinking about, but yeah, right. I, I love that. And I hope that you're, I hope that you're right about that. I mean, I like to think that there are more and more that are coming along and that, that we'll see even a larger percentage of overall healthcare kind of go in that direction. Um, now I think probably just to what I was saying before, because it is so top of mind. And, and I think that's probably been one of the many blessings, if there are any of the, the last couple of years, for sure, is that people are probably more well-informed in some ways than they ever have been right? in terms of right. their own health and certainly for their dogs. But, um, yeah. so maybe along that lines, just to kind of close out our, our interview, and I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, sure. So what other, you know, if you were kind of thinking about maybe even just treating your own dog, taking care of your own dog, what other, maybe the top three things that you could can think of in terms of optimizing the health of your dog? So we've kind of talked about the immune system and, and how probiotics play into the, the immune system part of it, but are there any other things that you might recommend or that you kind of think are sort of those top things that dog owners need to be thinking about? Yeah. Well, I think that, um, yes. So diet is, is probably, um, the number one, uh, and there's, and there's lots of ways just, just like, you know, for me, I mean, there's lots of ways to have uh, a healthy diet. Um, mm -hmm. it, you don't have to be a vegetarian to have a healthy diet. Um, but, but you need to be committed and educated about what you're putting into your pet's, uh, food bowl. And it needs to be, um, as minimally processed as possible. Um, it needs to be um, come from a, a very high quality sources of, uh, of protein and carbohydrates. And, and there do need to be vegetables in there because the vegetables provide them the fiber that they need um, in the, in the, and act as prebiotics as well. Um, you know, when they're just fed, you know, a meat and bone diet, they're not going to get enough fiber. And, uh, and that can lead to lots of problems. Um, so, you know, educating yourself on the diet is to me the number one thing that, that people can do. I think uh, holistically, I think uh, people also need to recognize the, the social um, system of, of being a dog, and that is that they're pack animals. And um, so often we, we, we love our dogs, but we leave them and we leave them for long periods of time and whether they become socially isolated and that can result yeah. in um, a lot of behavioral issues, but can also uh, result in chronic stress. And I think most of us also um, in this day and age are understanding yeah. that stress has a true physiologic impact on well-being. Um, and, and that 
constant high level of cortisol that that pet that has uh, anxiety disorder, um, that's going to affect that pet and th- that yeah. pet's long term um, well well being. So uh, managing their social condition is is very important to me as well as getting plenty of exercise. Um, now some of our smaller breeds are not meant to exercise that much, but our big bigger breeds are our sporting breeds, especially are meant to exercise. They need that exercise. That's very important. And then, you know, the, the only supplements that I think about, um, in, recommending to my patients are going to be based off of, um, meeting the deficiencies that they may have. Those could be medical deficiencies. They could be dietary deficiencies that are known, but, um, you know, controlling, if I can, if I can stop autoimmune problems and, and if I can stop gastrointestinal problems and if I can stop mobility problems, then I've dealt with 95% of what brings pets in for our firefighting treatment Okay. and it affects their quality of life. Uh, and so, you know, I think we accomplished that with, with our daily dog and taking care of the gut and the immune system. Um, I think a healthy diet is going to help uh, accomplish the, a lot of that. And, and mobility is a big, big problem. And it's a yep. big problem for big dogs, especially. Yep. And unfortunately, we have to put down a lot of dogs. Um, just they can't, they can't rise anymore and they can't get around. And so, and I've, I've had to do that, you know, with a Labrador, my, my own, you know, I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's heartbreaking, you right. know, and, and so I, I really am very empathetic towards those situations. And so what I, recommend and it's a sort of a, a sister product or sister company that we have with full bucket is um called rocket dog um but but essentially what it is is a uh it's a formulation there to do three things um one is to repair the the joint uh itself so the joint consists of a, a, a joint lining a, a cartilage mm-hmm. uh own and then the joint fluid. So it's there to provide all the essential building blocks of the joint. It's also there to minimize inflammation. Inflammation typically occurs from bad diets. Um, that in, 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 in the, the dog veterinary world, bad diets create inflammation. It's the same as people that don't eat well. They mm-hmm. tend to have mobility issues because they right. get overweight and they have chronic inflammation from that bad diet. A lot of times it's sugar in people, um, mm-hmm. but but that that creates mobility issues and bad diets create mobility issues in people and pets and those dogs, they're dealing with chronic inflammation. So I want a natural way to subdue that the chronic inflammation. So that's another element of the rocket dog is, okay. is a natural, some natural herbs that suppress inflammation. And then the last thing is, is controlling pain. Sometimes um, we're already at the point where we've got pain and right. that's coming from arthritis. And I can't undo that. Uh, it's, you know, yes, we can do stifle surgeries on dogs that tear their ACL, but um, but we're, we're not doing joint replacements like they do in people. And how many people do you know these days that get joint replacements? I mean, it's just crazy. And yeah. it's because we're living with this it's, chronic inflammation. Yeah. In our bodies. Well, and And to the point you made before, it's the diet and exercise. I mean, I think that that's so lacking in so many people that it's a compounding problem that I have people in my own family where it's like, well, you just need to not go out to eat every meal and you need to walk a little. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Uh, Me too. I Um, wouldn't make a very good doctor if you can't (laughs) I know. I'm a much better veterinarian than I would be a physician. I can tell you that. Oh, I would be terrible. I can uh, I can tell people and they can just decide to not do it, but I haven't attacked them. I've just attacked their dog. But it's typically the, the people with the overweight dog that has a lot of inflammation. They yeah. have the same yeah. thing going on with them. But to my point, mm-hmm. a lot of our large breed dogs get arthritis and they're in pain and it's chronic pain. And the way that we typically manage that uh, as veterinarians is with daily pain medication. Right. And yep. that in itself, anytime you got to give a medication chronically, you're you're not doing something natural for the pet. Now, for their well-being, a lot of times you have to do it. You right. have to control the pain. They can't get up anymore. But how many times have I seen pets that have had inflammation that I in and pain where they lose their mobility that I've changed their diet and I've put them on the rocket dog 
and I've gotten that inflammation down and I've controlled the pain, we use CBD to control the pain. Okay. okay. And so by doing the CBD, we've controlled the pain. I've taken the inflammation down with our Boswellia and our, our turmeric. And then we have put all the building blocks back in there to build up the joint again, keep the joint from degrading. You don't take a arthritic joint and make it non-arthritic, but you can stop the degradation of that okay. joint. Okay. And control the symptoms. That's what our goal is. But then I don't have to put those dogs back on the carprofen anymore. I right. can take them off the chronic non that they've had to have to live on. Right. And so that to me is, is the most important thing. Th those issues that we just discussed are what really limit our pets longevity and quality of life as well. Okay. And so if I can just control those with those basic things, I mean, that, I'm talking about basic stuff that's not expensive. Right. Then they're going to, especially with your big breed dogs, if you're, you're following, your tribe knows that if they take shortcuts, those dogs don't live long and they live no. miserable lives. No. Right? Yep. So you have to be really careful with those big, big breed dogs. And then if you do have to do surgery or put them on a daily medication, it costs you a fortune. Yeah. Because they're, they're so big. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, that's my basic uh, approach to trying to, uh, and I don't want people to quit coming to the vet. I just want them to come to the vet for a different reason. I want them to come right. and get their annual exam, their blood work, their fecal, their, their flea and tick and heartworm preventions, do that stuff. But I don't want to, I don't want them coming in limping. I don't want them coming in overweight with inflammation and itchy skin and throwing up and diarrhea and all right. this stuff. I, I just assume they don't come for that. Right. Yeah. And I think the animal is going to be happier as well. If when they're going, totally. when they're healthy, they're happy, you know, totally. and we start yeah. that when dogs are puppies, we, they learn that the vet is a really wonderful place to go. Not just the place that when you're feeling miserable, you have to go, right. <laughs> you right. know? Yeah, and I would be remiss in not mentioning before we wrap up and just uh, the fact that we we are the first uh, animal health company that started a one for one program. Um, I read Blake McCaskey's book, who started Tom's Shoes, Start Something That Matters. And uh, my mom gave me that book like in 07 when he first wrote it. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, you're familiar with Blake and Tom's I, Shoes. Yep, are I have heard. Yep. yep. Yeah. And so anyways, when, when Dr. Last and I started our company, we said, we're going to start something that matters. And so we followed Blake's deal. We provide uh, nutritional supplements for pets and for horses uh, on a one for one basis. We do volunteer trips to Central America every year. And then we also have domestic giving partners and where we in the pet space, we help therapeutic animals um, and provide them daily dog uh, on a one for one basis. So for everyone that we sell, we we donate one as well. So, so I'm very proud of that. Therapeutic dogs. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, dogs that are working in a therapeutic so, fashion, um, okay. either emotional or physical support. Service dogs. Service dogs. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, 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 Love it. you know, a, 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 one of our big partners um, provides um, social support for people that are um, in nursing homes and in hospitals. And we all know how powerful that yes. that big kiss of a dog is yep. uh, to those people that are that are hurting and lonely and sad. And yep. uh, and, and so we really um, we really lift those people up. I love for that. Those dogs. I love that. Yeah. And that was like the most perfect thing you could say to kind of wrap this up. And I will, I will say just to kind of the audience that's watching, I'm going to put um, links to e kind of everything that we sort of talked about today. I will put links to that, to your one for one program in the okay. description below. So you can get all of the information um, links to the daily dog and the, uh, the rocket, rocket dog, rocket mm -hmm. dog. I was going to say rocket mm -hmm. fuel, and I knew that was wrong. <laughs> okay. um, and so I'll put the links to everything in the description below. But uh, Dr. Franklin, I just can't thank you enough. This was a wealth of information. See, and I thought I like kind of, you know, I pretty much knew mostly about what I was asking. But I, I learned quite a lot today. So I know that my audience is going to be blown away. So I can't thank you enough. And yeah. thank you and Dr. Latson. He wasn't un unable to be here today. But just want to make sure that we extend our thanks to the entire team. And everyone yeah, that have I have dealt with team. has been amazing. So, you know, on, on your team. team, getting this scheduled and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So 
we can't thank you enough. And hopefully this won't be the last time we chat. I would love to kind of think through how we might be able to bring more information um, like this to the Big Dog Mom audience, because I do think it's incredibly important that we prioritize our dog's kind of holistic health and that we empower dog owners to really just own that for themselves. It's our responsibility to take care of these dogs and do it the very, very best that we can. So thank you so much. My pleasure, my absolute pleasure. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me just try it one last time. Welcome to this episode of What She Meant to Say. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Okay, all right, last, last time. This is the last time. Regardless <laughs> of what your feed your dog. Okay, go sit down.